Welcome fellow Star Wars collectors to my channel, just another Star Wars collector. I know a couple days ago I had talked about going to my storage locker and showing you guys what all I have in storage. Um, I've been unable to make it up there the past couple days, been kind of busy. Uh, we did do a lot more work in the basement. And it's definitely coming along good, but I didn't really feel necessary to show any more video of the basement. Um, so today, I was going through my computer, and I actually found some older pictures. I believe the year would have been probably 2001. So, I'll go ahead and get started with these pictures. There's, I think, about 45 pictures, and I'll run through them pretty quickly. Um, of course, there's this one here of the vintage loose that I have. Um, like I said, this was 2001. Most of these are from my childhood collection, ones that I played with. Uh, there are a few missing, as you can see. I don't do every variant. Um, some of the variants I did do, I felt were more common variants I guess um, like here I'm missing in the photo I'm missing uh, the white Bespin guard security guard uh, I believe I have the handlebar mustache I was missing the straight I now do have him and I was missing the biker scout half mask which I now do have as well so when I get around to displaying all this stuff again in the basement um, those two guys will be there and of course I'll do an update of, as we're doing everything. So, um, let's go ahead. Oh, in the case here, I had made, oh goodness, I probably made this in 96, maybe 95 even. Um, it's since been trashed and thrown away. It, it got ruined in one of the moves, and I'll have to come up with something different, but no big deal. So, let's see, move on to the next picture that I found. This here is my vintage carded collection. Um, nothing has really changed too much since this one. I haven't really added any vintage figures carded to my collection. So I think here I have 67 figures carded and two of them are duplicates, not duplicates, but I've got you know the Empire Yoda, the Jedi Yoda. Uh, so brown and orange snake and then I have two Vader's uh, Power of the Force Vader and standard Jedi Vader so actually I have 65 different characters carded uh, so there's that one um, next photo of course the creature Cantina the very first Star Wars toy released by Sears with the blue snaggletooth and uh, there's also some mail aways down here. I got Boba Fett, Forlom, got the survival kit, Emperor, and Nine Numb. I know there's more. I don't have them. Uh, this here is uh, a coin. I think it was a 10th anniversary uh, solid silver coin. It's really hard to make out, but that's what it is. And these are 24 karat gold plated cards. So there's that. Um, moving on. This is one of the shelving units uh, that I had in the vintage room. Um, a lot of different things going on here, mostly the 12 inch right down here. Um, I do have IG-88, but he's in the box here. So whatever characters I have boxed are in the boxes. And then these guys are all loose. Um, Luke, Obi-Wan, Vader, R2, uh, Jawa, and Fett. So. Uh, this is a Celebration book here. This was an autograph book at Celebration 2. I did attend Celebration 1, 2, and 3. Uh, this being from 2, I think they made 100. It was everybody who was at Celebration autographing. They did a book. Um, I think they only sold like maybe 30 or 40. Uh, but they did do it again at Celebration 3, which I have as well. It's just not in this picture. Um, so this was a Shelf Talker. Uh, vintage shelf talker back in the day for at the uh, movie rental places and then the original VHS trilogy no big deal there and then inside this glass cabinet is a creature cantina that I just showed you uh, moving on to the next picture 
This is uh, more vintage. Uh, pretty much self-explanatory. Everything on the shelf here. Um, some of these are from my childhood collection. Snow Speeder, Vader's Tie. Of course, the Death Star. And uh, the poor lightsaber here missing the blade. But I do have another one in the box over here. Actually, I believe I have a red and a green. Um, still with the cardboard attached to them. This one was probably a yellow. I'm not sure. Uh, next photo. This picture here. More vintage stuff. I know some people really love the A-Wing, Droids A-Wing, and the uh, POTF Skiff is in this picture. Uh, Hallmark ornaments up here. Some of the stuff I have on these shelves is like little erasers right here. I went to Europe in 1984 with my parents. I was young. Probably, I don't know. I guess I was like 15 or something. No, 13. I was 13 when I went, and Star Wars was still, you know, pretty prominent. In those days, I remember seeing tons of Trilogo stuff, which I wish I would have grabbed, but, you know, who knew? Hindsight's twenty twenty. But um, I did get a lot of stuff while I was there that I couldn't find here in the States, and some of this stuff, like these little racers, were from there. Um, so, let's see. Moving on. Another shelf. A couple shelves. More better picture of the skiff, uh, the battle wagon, of course, uh, the droids, ships. Um, this is a six pack Empire Strikes Back. I still have this, of course, where all the figures are bagged. None of it's been opened. The box has been opened, but the figures haven't been removed from the bag. And this is an Ewok set, uh, four Ewoks in there. Uh, moving on, more shelving units. So here we have, um, I'm sure if you guys remember, in 99, when The Phantom Menace came out, Pepsi did all the promotional stuff. And here is all the cans you could send away for this stand type thing where you could put your own cans in. So what I was doing is I was just drilling a hole in the bottom, letting the pop drain out, and then putting the cans in the stand that you mailed away for. But there was also a set that uh, Pepsi, it was a promotional thing, it came in a steel box. I think there might be a picture in here, we'll have to see. But it came with all the cans sealed empty. May not be in these, oops, don't want to do that. So, so here is some displays, uh, shelf talkers, stuff like that. Um, some of these I still have, some I don't. They just take up so much room. Um, they're big and they're neat to look at they're eye candy but they do take up a lot of space um, here's the six foot Naboo fighter the three foot droid fighter and the six foot Falcon from Toys R Us that hung in I don't know I think they made 500 of them that was what I had heard um, I can't remember what number mine is it does have a plaque up here right underneath the quad cannon but uh yeah, it's complete, it has everything, it lights up, uh, the guns on here, they flash red, and these yellow lights in front light up yellow, there's no engine lights, just the uh, guns and the headlights, so there's that picture, so mind you guys, all this stuff is in storage, so kind of giving you an idea of why I'd love to get this basement finished so I can put all this stuff out. There's my life-size Pepsi Yoda. It was a promotional thing in stores. I know, I, I'm not sure if it was Pepsi. Well, yeah, it was Pepsi. Yeah, this was a Pepsi promotion. There were some that had like a big gray stand that it would sit on that said Pepsi. I don't have the stand. Just this steel metal base for him. But he is really awesome. I really do enjoy the statue. That's the only statue I have. So here now we're getting into a POTF line. Um, most of you who were collecting back then will remember how many variations there were for orange or red laser, 
orange laser, whatever you want to call it, and the green laser cards. There were so many variations. And, um, of course, I fell victim to that, like most of us did, and tried going after everything and everybody on every variation possible, which, you know, sometimes it was impossible. I mean, Boba Fett probably had, I don't know, maybe a dozen variations, you know, with, between missing logo on the arm and missing chest emblem and half circle and full circle and you name it. And every combination there in between, it got insane. So there's that picture. And then here's this one. This basement where I took all these pictures, it was 1,200 square feet. And it had a laundry room that was pretty small. And it had a bathroom. So the bathroom was somewhat small. I mean, it had a shower. It had a sink, pedestal sink. And it had a toilet. So, uh, and it was like, a, like the vintage stuff was like in a separate room. This is in the bigger side. The other side, which didn't have like a finished ceiling or anything. It just had finished walls. So, more POTF2. Uh, Shadows of the Empire, you can see. There's some uh, uh, flashback photo figures here. Some contact chip figures. So, we're starting to get a little bit newer. Here's more POTF2 and uh, flashback photo. And then that one. It's just picture after. They, they made so many variations. You know, like, you can kind of... Okay, so right here, there's Boba Fett, there's Boba Fett, there's Boba Fett, there's Boba Fett, there's Boba Fett. But this is a... Uh, uh, Oh, what do they call it? I can't remember. But anyways, it came with like a little slide. Those were pretty cool. Some of them were really hard to get. Uh, they had the Empire. There was like red for heroes and yellow for like aliens. And then like blue was supposed to be Imperial. And some of the Imperial figures were real hard to get. Now they had, I would guess Weequay would have probably been the rarest one of the set. And I did get him. Um, he was the only one I actually had to buy off of eBay back then. And I'm, I'm sure I probably paid probably close to 100 bucks for him. But I had found Fett in the store. I had found the Sand Trooper in the store. And I had found, I think it was the ATST driver. Because there was like four of them that were real hard to get, but Weequay being the hardest. So there's that. Oh, and then there's Bendems down here. You know, a lot of people will say that in 95, when the Power of the Force figures hit, that's what reignited it. But what I think ignited Hasbro bringing back Star Wars was when the company who made the Bendems came out. Because these came out probably 94, 93, 94. And man, these things flew off the shelves. Um, and they were horrible. Like, you think the POTF2 is bad because they all look like Schwarzenegger? These Bendems were hideous. But people bought them. I mean, I bought them. I even bought the box sets. They had single blister card like these. They had box sets. It was crazy. So, um, this is Deluxe. So, there were variations here. Like, they had a Princess Leia collection. I have, like, multiples in the wall here of those. So, that means that those are variations. I can't even remember what the variations are. There's so many. Um... There was a variation on the Comtech reader even, so I have two of those. It just, and there's Comtech guys up here. Go back here. Okay, so now we're getting into, there's Power of the Jedi Episode 1. So I think Power of the Jedi was after Episode, yeah it was. Because it's got Obi-Wan on it. So, yeah, Episode 1, some Episode 1 figures, and then... Power of the Jedi was after that. In Europe, or wherever, I can't remember exactly, I think it might have been Europe, Episode 1, I don't think they had the Comtech uh, chips, so they would give you a bonus battle droid. So that's what these sets are. These are most of the characters with a battle droid instead of a Comtech chip. And then here, I don't know if I can zoom in anymore or not, see on the camera so 
they went up to, I think, Sal. There's Rick Ali, there's Jar Jar. And at some point, they switched over. Instead of packing in battle droids, they packed in pit droids. So, like, this is uh, Darth Sidious hologram with a pit droid. There's a Maul with a pit droid. I think that's Qui-Gon, Watto, another Anakin, and a Nebu, Re Nebu Rebel Soldier, all with pit droids. So, I always thought that was kind of interesting. So, I tried to collect most of those. I know there were different colors of the pit droids, so, like, each character, like, let's say, uh, Darth Sidious Hologram, he might have been packaged with three different colors of pit droids. But I wasn't going that far. I, fig I figured, okay, I got him with a pit droid, I'm happy. That was fine for me. And these holes here, these are for variations that were out. So, that I didn't have it yet. Of course, here's episode one. Good Lord. So, I mean, at the time, this was all hot stuff. I mean, you know, when all this stuff came out, man, people were going nuts. And, and I was one of them. You know, I, I bought every single thing that they pretty much released for episode one. It was insanity. Because we had waited so long. You know, you figure... It was a new film. It was all new characters. I mean, some old, but they were younger. So, we all went nuts. Here's another wall. So, here we have um, Power of the Jedi. And then it goes into, I think this was Saga. Saga Collection. Which was a really cool collection. That was, they made some really interesting characters. Um, they were mostly 5 POA. A lot of them were in crazy poses where you couldn't... They were, they were like little statues, even. You really couldn't do much with them. Um, so, but they were cool. You know, at the time, it was like the coolest thing ever. Uh, this is... Like, that's Toy Fair Vader. The one with the saber pops out of the bubble. That was insanity when that came out for sale. Oh, my gosh, I remember that. I think when... Um, was it uh, Star Wars Fan Club offered it for sale? The site crashed. So many people signed on to try and get it that the site literally crashed. Let me see. I can't remember what year that was, but it probably says on there. I just can't read it. These pictures are old. <laughs> this was probably taken with a regular 35 millimeter camera. And then I took a picture with a digital and then uploaded it years ago. So, all right. Oh, yeah, the George Sakal figure. I think that was Celebration 2. And then these are those Lukes. Like, there was uh, one with Magnet, one without Magnet, and one with Bloody Stump. And, yeah, the variation stuff was crazy back then. So here we are with um, more modern. Uh, most of these pictures are going to be modern. There is a little bit more vintage coming up. Um, these are all 12 inch. I love the 12 inch line. Um, up until the new films, um, The Force Awakens, I didn't collect any 12 inch and I haven't since that movie. Uh, but in 95, when they brought the three and three quarter inch line back, they brought out 12 inch and I collected all of them all the way through episode one into power of the Jedi into saga so I love that stuff well, let's see next slide this here is uh, ships vehicles uh, beasts everything I know you can't see but way down here on the end is like where the orange box stuff is so like the Falcon the X-Wing and all that stuff you know, it was all the old molds just recasted and put in newer boxes. Maybe better sounds and lights and stuff. And then you go into the green box. And then, let's see, then it goes back here. It's still green box. And then it goes into episode one right here. Um, episode one up to probably about here. Excuse me, I think it changes to Power of the Jedi. So, Saga was just starting to come out probably when I took these pictures. Here's more. I mean, you can see. Look at all this Episode 1 stuff. I mean, there's some classic trilogy stuff here, or what I call Holy Trilogy stuff, but there's also a ton of Episode 1 stuff here. 
I mean, I still have all this stuff. It's all packed away. This is all Tiger Electronic games and stuff that they released. I mean, everybody jumped on board with this stuff. You know, NECA and Galoob and Tiger, of course, Kenner slash Hasbro. I mean, everybody was making stuff. It was crazy. Room alarm clocks. I don't even know who made those. It might have been Tiger. I don't know. Um, this is, uh, oh, I did it again. This is, okay, so more episode one stuff, like these watches and stuff. They would sell at KB Toys. They are probably giving them away uh, in like 2000, 2001, somewhere around in there. It's model kits, episode one. This is the actual store display for the Comtech reader um, where it had like a big button. It said, try me. And you push the button and you could take the figure still in the package and scan it across it. And it was like amplified with its own speaker. It, it was really cool. So I managed to get one of those, which is neat. Um, yeah, some masks back here, some Legos. Now, the whole Lego thing, I got. I jumped on the Legos when they came out in 99 because they debuted them at Celebration 1. I remember that. And I thought they were the coolest things ever. I'm like, wow, you know, Lego for Star Wars. How cool is that? So I started collecting them. And I was doing really, really well with them. And then I just kind of lost interest in them. And I wanted to focus more. Like, Gentle Giant had come out. And they were releasing these busts. And I remember those in 99. They were uh, premiering those at Celebration as well. And I thought the Gentle Giant busts were, like, the coolest thing ever. So... I kind of gave up on Lego and started focusing on the Gentle Giant bus, but uh, here's Action Fleet, another line that I absolutely adored. These ships were so cool. I mean, there was there were variations with these too. Like you see, there's three Y wings here. I don't even know if you can really see, but there's three Y wings here, and I think there's three Snow Speeders. And but I managed to collect every single one of them, even the E wing and the Tie Defender. I got those. Uh, these were like the concept ships down here. Uh, they did electronic ones where you could battle each other. Had like a handle that you pull a trigger. Just all kinds of neat stuff. They had RC ones. I gotta give it to Galoob. I mean, I know Hasbro bought Galoob, but I gotta give it to Galoob. They really knew what they were doing when they did this stuff. Because, you know, had I been younger and actually played with this stuff... These would probably be my favorite toys next to the three and three quarter inch. I mean, they were just so cool. And believe me, there were times I thought about opening them and displaying them because they look even better out of the box. But So, yeah, here's more. This is the other side of that shelf. So more action fleet. You got like the duo down here, Falcon versus Tie and Scepter. Here's, I think these are electronic ones. Uh, here's episode one stuff. I was collecting all of those. I mean, I collected all the way up. Like, I believe I managed to get every single one. Even, um, was it episode two? It might have been. I can't remember. But yeah, they, they came out with a really cool box where it was completely see-through on top, like all the way around, and it just had like a cardboard base. So you could see the vehicle all the way around through the plastic top and those were really cool but I don't have pictures of that stuff because that all came out after I took these photos and then here you see some more of the ridiculousness that was episode one you got games you got I don't know this is like that battle bot robot game but with Qui-Gon and Maul uh, these banks these big broom banks. Like there was uh, Ma there was um, Jar Jar, then there was Maul, Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan. Well, the Qui-Gon, the Obi-Wan, and the Maul, you could put them together, and they would kind of communicate with each other, and they would fight, which was pretty neat. A buddy of mine had them, and he, of course, opened them. He was an opener, and um, he set them up, and, and I enjoyed watching them. They were pretty neat. Jar Jar, I think, just danced to the Cantina song or something. It was really ridiculous. Um, yeah, this is, you can even say I got some slippers down here for crying out loud. I got a tie. More Tiger Electronics stuff. Uh, 
And here we have, I think this is like NECA and stuff. Yeah, this is all NECA stuff up here, like mugs and little PVC figures and uh, coin purses and banks. Um, I think these are uh, keychains. And then uh, we get into like the, the water pistols that they made. I think these were water pistols. Some stuffed animals, well, plush Star Wars characters. Uh, the Epic Force line, which was really cool. I liked the, I think those were called Epic Force. Uh, they had like a base, and you could spin them, spin the character around. It was more like a statue. They, they weren't posable, but they were well detailed. They were almost like a, a six inch with no articulation. Uh, so there's those. I mean, they didn't make too many of them. Uh, the three pack is probably the rarest out of all of it. Uh, they did a three pack of three three characters in the box. That was an exclusive to somebody. I can't remember who. But all the other ones are fairly common. I know people probably love the Fett and the Leia for the most part. Those were the hot ones. Uh, here we have more mugs, more NECA, and then you have these other statues. I think these were NECA as well. They were a little larger. Um... Some role play stuff down here. More episode one stuff. I mean, I can't remember what all this stuff is. I haven't seen it in so long. I haven't seen this stuff in uh, more than 11 years. It's probably been 13 or 14 years because I started at my mother's house for in her basement for about four or five years. So it's probably been closer to 15 years since I've seen this stuff out like this. And there's way more, I mean, because everything I have down in the basement is from 2008 to present, and what's in storage is 95 up to 2008, and these pictures were taken in 2001, or 2000, somewhere around there. So everything that came out from 2002, from 2002 all the way up to 2007, I don't have any pictures of any of that stuff. More 12 inch. These are all exclusive 12 inch. Uh, FAO Schwartz stuff, Toys R Us stuff, uh, two pack 12 inch stuff. Uh, the big beast collect like Cadu with Captain Tarples and uh, the speeder bike sets and the Dubac sets and all that crazy. The, the big books that came out. The one had Aura Singh, one had, um, I think it was uh, Anakin Skywalker. They were like these big books. There was a 3PO one and big books. This is, uh, so here's, I'm sorry these pictures are so dark guys, there's not much I can do about it, but here's Lego down here, this is all Lego, um, up to that point. You know, there weren't any exclusive Lego sets yet, they weren't doing them big, huge, uh, what do they call them, the, the Ultimate Collection something or other sets now. Um, they weren't doing those back then. But I do have these, like, little Lego bricks, which I love, because these, you can only get these at Celebration 1. Lego was handing them out which were really neat. They were yellow with the classic character picture that was on these boxes. They don't use that picture anymore, but they're neat. Go to the next one. Here's another display. This is all like promotional stuff. Uh, the cups that they gave out, uh, well, that you bought, it was like KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut, I believe, were the three companies, and they each had four exclusive cups to them, and if you went there like once every month, there was a new cup, and you could get that new cup if you bought a large pop. And then there were buckets, you know, chicken buckets and toppers that were frisbees and just crazy. I mean, like I said, we all went nuts back then for this stuff. Well, most of us did. You know, if we were a kid in 1977 and fell in love with Star Wars, and then when 1999 and all this stuff came out, we went, we all went crazy. Here's another picture. This is actually in the vintage room again, so this is a little out of order. But uh, you can see some vintage lunch boxes here, some puzzles. This big white box here contains number 1 through 107 of the original Marvel comics. These are all books, uh, albums. There's a bunch of albums here. Probably this is all fan club stuff, like the Insider and Bantha Tracks and stuff like that. Uh, all the cards. I do have all the original Tops cards with stickers and all that other fun stuff. 
up here is the Pepsi promotional. Now this is the big thing with Pepsi at the time. If uh, you found a gold Yoda can when you bought a case of Pepsi, if there was a gold Yoda can, you could send it in to Pepsi. They would mail you a check for $25. So that can was worth 25 bucks at the time. There was Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Pepsi One, and I think it was Mountain Dew or something. So there were four Yoda cans. So there's the four Yoda cans. There's the cap. Um, if you bought a Pepsi and you spun the cap off and it said Yoda underneath, you can mail that in for $25. So that's the Yoda cap. Then there was the Destiny can, which in my opinion is probably more rare than the Yoda cans. It was a full color can called the Destiny can and it had a photograph of Anakin on it. Um, so, and actually I bought this from the fan club. It's sealed empty. And back then the fan club made it available. I don't remember how much it was, like 50 bucks or something. And then here is the actual check. Can you guys even see this? Let me, uh, let me try and do this up a little bit. So I'm at the very top of the screen here. So, but here's the check. Two Yoda cans, two Yoda cans, Destiny can and cap. So, I'm, I'm kind of proud of that because that's like the whole promotional thing for episode one that year. Which was, was kind of fun but annoying at the same time trying to collect all that stuff. Um, so we're back to the other room again. Did that again. Make this bigger. So here we have role play stuff, lightsabers, um, some model kits that I had built. Um, looks like little, little statues. These might be, um, well, I don't know. These might be NECA. They might be little NECA statues. I'm not sure. So, there's that. And this was um, the top of my TV stand. And this might be even earlier than... This might be earlier than the rest of the pictures. But um, this was the uh, cinema cast, Darth Vader. It was actually um, Kenner. But it was called the cinema cast Vader. And it's porcelain. It's really cool. Actually, there's an interview with George Lucas, and this statue is behind him. But the one that they sent to him, they made it to where the lightsaber blade lit up. Where the ones that all of us could buy were just standard, there was no light-up blade. Um, and these two lightsabers, there's um, Vader's, and uh, that's Luke's. Um, these were actually made by a company called Icons, which had the license to make lightsaber replicas before Master Replica had it. Um, Icons did three lightsabers and a blaster. They did Vader, Luke, and there was an Obi-Wan lightsaber, old Obi-Wan, and there was also Han Solo's blaster, which sadly I never got the last two. Um, they lost their license due to the fact that they couldn't meet the demand for this stuff. They weren't shipping. They were taking people's money, and I believe when they basically folded... And uh, they took a lot of people's money who never got the stuff. And I believe these were like 350 a piece, and we're talking, you know, 90s. So, yeah, I was very fortunate to get the two that I got, that I paid for. Um, moving along. This was a spare bedroom. At the time, I had no children, so um, I took a spare bedroom and kind of Put some of my loose stuff, you know, because I was buying multiple stuff. And, and I liked Sebulba. I thought he was a really cool character. So I kind of did like a little, um, I don't know what you'd call it. But uh, like a little Sebulba themed. You know, I got the pods here. Pod racers and Sebulba mask and standees and toys. And so uh, moving on. So here, this, <laughs> this was my living room at the time. Um, some autographs on the wall. Some of these were really hard to get, but managed to get all these, which was pretty cool. You know, and this was 1999, so I was just start this this one up here. It's actually Chewy when he's on Hoth with Han. Um, this is the first autograph I ever got right here. I don't know if you can see the cursor moving, but that's my first autograph ever. Oh, this. Okay, there we go. 
So yeah, that was my first one. And there's actually a picture of me with Peter Mayhew. He's sitting down, I'm standing. I probably was like 15 when I got this autograph. Um, and then the Jawa, I think I got at the same convention. It was the 10th anniversary, Star Wars 10th anniversary. So that would have been 1987. Pretty cool. Um, this is more of that bedroom. Um, I got this poster rack from Kmart when I went out of the business out by me. Um, they were selling, you know, racks and shelving units, and I bought this. I thought it was really cool. Put all my posters in, and you couldn't fit the theatrical posters in it. These were too small, but like the posters, you know, there's like another standard size for this style poster, so I was able to put posters in there. Um, and here's an R2 cooler, smaller than the um, promotional Pepsi one, but I think this was available through the fan club as well at the time. this small go to the next one so here's all the Hamilton plates uh, the top eight are the original eight that Hamilton put out there was a set of eight um, and then they came out with a set of 12 called heroes and villains and then after that they came out with another set that was uh, vehicle based it was all vehicles and there was 12 of those and then they actually did um, a plate for each uh, film from the original trilogy. Uh, so there were, and I think these were 10 inch and these were 8 inch. So these 8, these 12, and these 12 were all 8 inch. These three were 12 inch or 10 inch. And then I believe that they came out with one. It was a, a trilogy plate and it was 12 inch. That one I never did get. Uh, and then there's the FAO Schwartz, Queen Amidala, Celebration Gown, Doll, she's, I don't know, she's, I'm sure she's not in too high demand, but she is pretty rare, um, they didn't make many, she was an exclusive to FAO Schwartz, she's 18 inches tall, she's porcelain, um, there was another one that they did that's a little more rare than this, actually a lot more rare than this one, where she came with a trunk and another gown. But uh, this was the gown I wanted, and um, when I saw it was being made, I, I had to have it. So, there's that. This actually is not in storage. My mother actually has this, <laughs> has this doll on display in one of her curio cabinets with, like, her Cinderella and stuff. Uh, getting into some posters. Some more posters. There's some half sheet posters for Empire, which I, I love these posters. And these are made out of a thicker stock than a regular poster. These are almost like a cardboard. They're not cardboard, but they're they're a thick paper. Almost like, uh, I don't even know. I, I'm not, I don't know what like weights are with paper, but they're, they're thicker than a standard poster. You can't fold them. And here we are, the Caravan of Courage. And, what was the other one? Caravan of Courage and an Ewok Adventure or something. Those. And then, of course, the Episode 1 teaser and theatrical. There's a nice Empire poster. Jedi poster. And these were the two promo... I think there was three. But here's the two of them. Promotional posters. And I forget who that was. I, I It's on the tip of 